All right, welcome to this latest edition of our Pro Tools tutorials. And my name is Joe Ricardo. I run uh, DeepScopeRecords.com and DeepScope Recording Studio, a uh, professional mixing and mastering studio. And uh, today we're going to talk about the Almighty Trim Tool. And it's something that I use quite a bit, as you can see across this whole mix. There are these little Trim Tool plugins all up here. And it is a, an immensely useful tool. I use it for a variety of reasons. Um, the main one being is that everything up here is pre-fader. So whatever's going on up here um, does, isn't affected so much by what goes on down here. So if you have an effect up here and you turn it down, you're still getting the full um, amount of that effect. Um, so if you use this trim tool, you can turn down your track up and down. There's also this phase reverse switch. Let's go over here to the snare drum. And I found there was some phase problems. We did another video at DeepScopeRecords.com talking about um, how to solve phase issues. And here's your phase reverse switch right here in this neat little trim tool, which incidentally doesn't take up very much processing power. Now, I use the trim tools to affect the volumes, up or down, mostly down, of my entire mix. Oh, and incidentally, there's also, if you turn something up, let's find something, let's see, let's just bring one up right here. It's under the multi-mono plugin, under other, and I've got this neat little menu thing up here that I use but uh, you go down here to other on the multi mono and you bring up your trim tool and if you turn it up and you need more than plus six it's got this other one other button right here that'll take you up to plus twelve just like anything else you can hit the alt button or the option button on a Mac and click on it and send it back to zero you can use the command button on a Mac or the control button on a PC and hold that down and move this fader and as you can see right here we are only doing a tenth of a DB whereas if you don't hold down that command or control button you're getting 3 DB 0.3 DB and sometimes those tenths of a dB are exactly what you need to, ha to get that instrument to sit just right in the mix. Now, the other reason that I use the trim tool is probably the most important reason. You can look as I play this mix, and you can see all of these faders moving. And that's our automation. Now, let's say, let's go back to the, the mix window, I mean the, the edit window, and let's say you do all of this automation, and then you decide, hey, I love the automation. It's perfect. I want to keep it. It's right where I want it. But the overall level of the track comes down. Now, if you've got any automation whatsoever, let's take this pedal steel track. Turn this down a little more. If you've got any automation whatsoever in a track, if you go to turn down this fader, it's not going to take. It's going to go right back to where the level of the automation is. And you certainly don't want to go in and change the level <laughs> of all this, or even all this for this matter, for that matter, or all of this. So, the best way to get around that, and now you've automated, you want to turn the whole track up and down, is to use the trim tool. And I often, in a mix, will use automation in, a, um, in my effects. So let's go back, um, 
let's see, let's go to the, in this track, let's go to the vocal, which is in this mix track. And you can see here, I go here to my reverb level, and you can see I've automated those. I've taken them up some, I've taken them down some. All to um all all to make I like for my effects to be realistic. So if if I'm blowing away on a chorus, this is kind of getting into another topic. If I'm blowing away on a chorus, the reverb needs to be affected as well. And let's say you put automation in your effects, and you decided, hey, I want to turn down the um. I want to turn down my effects level sometimes. Where is it? Okay, yeah, right here in my uh, my, my vocal delay, I want to turn down the whole thing. I might come in and turn this down a little bit to where I want it to affect the whole thing. Whereas I wouldn't be able to do that if say I had automation in my in my re, in my reverb uh, in, my, in in my reverb aux in my reverb send and return, so there's a that's a whole slew of things. Um, it becomes most handy in two ways with effects. And also, more importantly, if you've got automation here, you can use this trim tool. And also, of course, like I, we talked about before, there's the um, phase reversal. But if you've got automation in the track and you want to turn down the whole track, you can just use this trim tool. It's a fantastic little tool. And incidentally, you can also have them. See, this is a, a stereo aux. You can also have them in your stereo tracks. And what you would do, multi-mono plug-in trim and that's it folks that's the trim tool i use it all the time it's a great little plug-in and it becomes very useful like i said when you've got um tracks that are automated so that's it if you've got any questions uh deep scope at deepscoperecords.com is the website um and also you can visit us deep scope at um, www.deepscoperecords.com is the website so that's it have a nice day.